You're listening to the Zandbergen Report, where wealth strategies and investment wisdom collide with Bart Zandbergen, your distinguished host and certified financial planner. Welcome to the Zandbergen Report, a showcase for wealth strategies and investment wisdom that's essential for our evolving world. I am your ho- host, Bart Zandbergen. In studio, as usual, our 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 master behind the curtain, Paul. <laughs> the, the the only peasant in the room here. I'm with royalty. I'm with noblemen today here. <laughs> wow. So so speaking <laughs> of that, I am so. Uh, pleased and so proud to have a good friend of mine, uh, Eve Lesure, who is executive edi- editor of Nobleman Magazine. Eve is a passionate creator and innovative thinker who brings a particular sense of style and aesthetic to each project he touches. He continues to set the standard for creative and digital in- innovation at Nobleman Magazine, which is experiencing amazing success in delivering premier luxury men's style and lifestyle content for men with taste. Eve, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. And that was quite the intro. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's well-deserving. Well, thank you. So, um, Eve, um, you and I have got to know each other pretty well, and you have quite the pedigree that brought you to uh, Noble Magazine. you mind telling the audience a little bit about kind of your your work past and to get where you are today? Yeah, it's kind of a uh, sort of somewhat of a long journey, but uh, the cliff notes is that I was in publishing uh, probably 20-some odd years ago, which... That dates me a little bit, but uh, I was in publishing uh, for the first few years of my career, and then I turned to advertising, which I was at um, both at Sachi and Sachi and Shia Day for probably the next 15 years of my career in the uh, 2000 or so. Uh, And then I went on the client side for a little bit, came back on the agency side, which I had a pretty deep love affair with advertising. And then I just happened to run into Doug McLaughlin, and uh, we talked about the magazine and and what was needed a little bit, which was kind of a, an adult at the table, <laughs> and uh, and here I am. Yeah. All right. Well, there was a very modest version of your of your history, but I'll let you get away with that for right now, oh, and we'll pick about that a little bit later. Um, so, um, for those who don't know, um, I'm going to have you describe a nobleman a little bit more than I did in my intro. Um, As many of the listeners know, um, and if you don't, I am a contributing writer, which I'm so proud to be because it is an amazing uh, book uh, and I think an inspiration for men. But why don't you let the audience know a little bit about what, 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 what you're doing with Nova and what you're trying to do. Well, I think we want to kind of set the standard and, and really talk about what really is a nobleman. And a lot of people that look at the magazine, they kind of they, they see it as, as kind of a, an aesthetic point of view. That it's a beautiful book, and it's really well done, and you know, it's rich in, in, in content and look and design. Uh, but ultimately, my role over there is to craft a, a voice for the magazine. We want to define who uh, a nobleman is and what he is also. Uh, I think we've, we've had a million conversations about that, you and I, about the fact that a nobleman can either be a, a, a plumber or it could be a CEO. For me, there's really no difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's all about your integrity. It's all about your character. And I think that we want to be able to find stories and people in the magazine that will tell their stories and how does it apply to the overall concept of, of nobility. Yeah, great. And um, although you weren't there at the beginning, um, you might have, have some t- saying that now. What is the inspiration for the for the book? Doug, uh, you know the, the the publisher Doug McLaughlin had a, this out, literally came to him in a dream. He wanted a, an outlet to to have men's passions and hobbies and, and all that that sort of stuff that's not really seen on the, on the magazine scene. Uh, most magazines are created for women and by women. Mm-hmm. Uh, so men tend to to have a very little space in the bookshelf, and usually it's in sports. Yeah, that's right. So if it's not in sports, then it kind of gets brushed off a little bit. Yeah. I think the magazine really ins- is inspiring to me uh, because it gives us access to creating great stories about men, what they like, what they aspire to be, and uh, who they are in their everyday life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and then beyond inspiration, what 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 are the goals for for you in the magazine right now? 
I think I think the goal. Well, there's, there's a couple of things. I think that from uh, an editorial point of view, which is really kind of my purview, is to make sure that the voice is consistent and that we have a point of view always. I want the readers to to grab the book and not just look at the images. I want them to to read what we write. So that means that we have to have a point of view about things. I don't really care whether or not you agree with it or not, but we need to have a point of view. From a business point of view, and I know that Doug would probably share that sentiment, we want to grow the magazine to, to be a relevant presence nationally. The book is distributed nationally right now. Uh, but we're still a baby, and it's only going to be our seventh issue coming up in September. Okay. Uh, so there's a lot of room for growth. Uh, we've been very happy, and it's been growing quickly. Uh, but it needs to continue to grow at that pace as well. Yeah. Now, realizing I come from somewhat of a biased uh, position, but I will say most magazines until now, I would be guilty of kind of flipping through. Maybe there's an article, checking out the pictures, whether it's you know fitness or fashion or, or a little bit of sports. But I read every single article in this book every time it comes out, and they're, they're, they're quite good slash inspirational slash informational, just, just good writing. That, that seemed to be kind of the consensus. The people that we've talked to, and both men and women, by the way, are our women audience is growing as well. The rate of you know a few percent every issue. Oh, no kidding. Uh, we thought that the book would be ninety ten, so ninety percent would be a, a male readership yeah. and ten percent, but it's inching toward twenty five percent female. No kidding. And seventy five percent male. So I think the book kind of speaks to a lot of people, not just to men. Uh, but everyone that we talk to, they keep the magazine. It's something that's a little bit more of a coffee book than, than kind of a magazine. Yeah. They don't throw them away. They keep them. Yeah. Um, and I think that you can see it, you know, when we go to offices and all that, people have them as a kind of a collection. So yeah. we're very proud of that fact. My wife. So I have a stack of all the editions and multiple of each, and uh, she constantly is having me clear out my magazine. She's like, honey, aren't you going to get rid of some of those? I'm like, I can't. They're too nice. It's hard. You know, I tend to, I tend to be a little bit of a hoarder when it comes to magazines. <laughs> <laughs> especially with this one. Yeah. Um, what are, um, as you're an executive editor, um, tell the audience what that is and what are some of the highlights of being an executive editor? Well, it kind of changes from book to book. I mean, the, the, the executive editor and some would go with managing editor and, and there was already, you know, somebody with that title. So the executive editor really looks at um, the content of the magazine and to make sure that there's coherence within the book so that the voice of the magazine gets really uh, uh, put together in one way that people can recognize. And I think that that's what the executive editor really does. In addition to that, uh, all the content in the magazine comes under my desk and uh, under and over the desk, really, it seems. <laughs> uh, and I get it to have a say into what the pieces look like and feel like and adjust that to make sure it fits what the magazine and the audience really is. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to that, um, the staff at the magazine on the editorial side really kind of reports to me and, um, and to make sure that we also have that voice as respected and all that. Yeah, yeah. Now this question kind of goes hand in hand. So those those are maybe some of the highlights. What are what are some of the challenges that, that you're faced with on a daily basis? It's the printing business. Uh, it's it's every day is a challenge. I think it's you know the people that we talk to always kind of laugh at the fact that we started the magazine in a time that print is is having a whole lot of challenges. Yeah. But we do believe, and we continue to do so, and I think it's proven to be right and successful that if we have a quality product and we're going to have an audience and know what audience is, they'll find us. But the challenge is to keep, keep it fresh every time, uh, making sure that people will give them reason to pick up the magazine on the shelf and subscribe. So yeah, the challenges are that. I mean, you know, you, we deal with them. We have a small staff. You know, budgets tend to be a little bit uh, uh, tight. So all of that at the same time, these are, would be the, the main challenges. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to switch gears a little bit here. Um, as I get to know you, um, I've discovered that you are, um, you know, work is very important to you, but also family and life. And, and we're going to talk a little bit about your recent uh, Africa trip. We'll do that after the break. But while I didn't print it, I will tell you that you're, you did a post on your birthday a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and it, it was really super moving to me. Oh. Um, because you approached it not from, um, you know, one, you know, not that I'm a great guy or, 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 you know, all about business. It was really on the fundamentals of, of, I think what drives you, um, can you break it down a little bit? Like what, what, how you yeah, created it's, it, that? It's kind of funny after, uh, you know, when you get past the age of 50 and, 
And, you know, at 55 now, logically and mathematically, you know, the, I've got more years behind me than in front of me. <laughs> well, at least I, 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 I think so. Uh, so I kind of wanted to look at my, my birthday as a place where I was, you know, both uh, spiritually, family-wise and all that. And I realized that I was pretty happy. And, you know, even with, you know, challenges and issues and all of that that we get through, you know, every day with families and all that, um, I was in a pretty good spot. And so I think that that's what has spurred me into writing that. Yeah, actually, I'm gonna. I'm not quite done with that. Do you rem- do you remember it off the top of your head, or I want to look it up? I, th- I think I'd have to look it up exactly yeah. what I said, but um, yeah, we can look it up. this fine. Okay. Well, I'm gonna come back to that then because it just means again was so moving for me. Um, this is certainly related, and uh, you seem to from from where I stand as a friend and seeing you um, as an kind of outside uh, looking in, you seem to be able to manage that kind of work life balance. Um, any tricks on that, or, or how do you, how does that? I don't know that there's a trick. I think that uh, I think you need to to realize what's important. Uh, you know, I'm fine with with uh, having a good, great, successful life in, in terms of business, but if I come home and I have no one to talk to about it, then it becomes for naught. I think that my wife has always always been you know my my biggest supporter and my biggest fan. And I am hers as well. And I think that that, uh, and then we keep a sense of humor about everything too. So I think that that's one thing that uh, it helps balance things. I, tend, I have a tendency to be a little bit of a workaholic. So she'll call me on it pretty quickly and say, listen, you haven't been home in three days. So why don't you just spend 20 minutes telling me about your day? <laughs> and then and she'll make me laugh and then uh, and then things will get better instantly. So I think that that's, that's where the balance comes from. I'm able to kind of look at my life and say, okay, well, A, I'm not curing cancer. B, uh, there's a lot more problems in the world. And I think going to Africa really, <laughs> really kind of crystallized that. And I'm, f- I'm very fortunate. Yeah. Um, well, it's certainly an inspiration there. So who in your life would you consider a mentor Uh, a mentor was uh, there was a woman that I worked for uh, uh, quite a while a long time ago her name is Sue Arellano and uh, she was uh, one of the partners of the agency that I worked at and uh, she always was able to provide a good word I, I, I was a I was young, out of temper, and, and I was uh, I was pretty quick to 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 the draw. And she was able to kind of calm me down and say, "Okay, a you're not always the smartest person in the room, so that's one thing. <laughs> and B maybe if you listen more than you talk, it would be yeah. great. Yeah. And that's a lesson that I learned the hard way. Yeah. And uh, but but she was always quick to be able to say, "Listen, this is not the worst thing that's going to happen. Wait till tomorrow." Yeah. And I think that that for that, you know, I'm. I'm you know, I'm still in contact with her, and she's always has good, you know, good wisdom over the years, and, and so I love her, and I think she was really instrumental in making make sure my career just moved the right way. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Um, is there a particular podcast uh, that you like, or or presenters of podcasts? I I tend to listen to Mark Cuban a lot. Oh, you do, and for whatever odd reason. Yeah. Uh, and you know, he's always. An odd guy to talk to, to to listen to sometimes, and his yeah. opinions are always pretty strong. I tend to be very opinionated too, so I always take a little bit of value in what he says. Yeah. So. How about authors? Anybody that inspires you? Or? I'm a big Walter Saxon uh, fan, and mm-hmm. he's a great. You know, he does a great work in biographies and all that. And yeah. I, I just finished actually the uh, Leonardo da Vinci uh, biography for oh, him. Oh yeah. And so I think his point of view is always sort of different as an author. He yeah. doesn't try to impose his view on the subject. Yeah. He sort of kind of reports. He's more of a reporter, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, I always love his work. Yeah, nice. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back in just a moment. Imagine what it would feel like to lose everything. Your job, your home, your family, your dignity. This has happened to thousands of the men, women, veterans, and young adults we serve at Working Wardrobes. What do we do to help? We provide career development services, life skills workshops, job skills training. We provide the perfect interview outfit, and we get clients placed in jobs. Call Working Wardrobes, 714-210-2460. Donate, volunteer, invest, hire. 
Imagine buying a newspaper and discovering that the news you're reading is six months old. There isn't much that stays the same for six months. And the same thing goes for background checks. In a time when so much outdated information is being passed around, it's good to know that People G2 offers something different. At People G2, we provide today's intelligence, not yesterday's news. Our value-added approach offers you a fully FCRA-compliant solution that includes up-to-the-minute information. By combining industry-leading technology with old-school human investigation, People G2 is able to give you information that is accurate right now, delivered quickly to our online system or integrated with your HR system. So ask yourself, are you comfortable working with old news? Or are you ready for a different kind of background check company? Visit PeopleG2.com or call 800-630-2880. That's 800-630-2880 or PeopleG2.com. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, again, in studio, Yves Lassure. We're talking about... His career as an editor, his 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 little bit of his life journey and and, and uh, inspirational comments about life, and I we did find his his recent posts and uh, we mentioned it earlier. So I'm, I'm going to read it out loud and then we need to break it down anymore. I think it, it would be kind of fun. So this is for his uh, 55th birthday. So he says, "Well, 55 years old today." I am in the following order: a believer in Christ, a devoted husband to my lovely bride Diana. A father to what seems to be a plethora of kids, a writer, an artist, a lover of Montreal Canadiens and the France uh, national football team, a friend to many and envious of none. I celebrate today because I am blessed. I am a blessed man. I am happy seeking the next adventure, curious to see what our family will do next. Most of all, I am in the exact place I should be. Most people look at middle age as the dipping point. I see it as the beginning of what is next. Yeah, that's so great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, very well done. Um, anything more you want to say about that, or are you ready? To... No, I think the last uh, the, the the last sentence is you know I, I do see my life as the beginning of what's next. Yeah. And you know I I always tell that to people. I have a lot of juice left. It feels like I have a lot of things left to say. Yeah. And so I'm kind of excited to what's coming. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good lead. lead in. One of the questions I'd like to ask is, what's your why? Why why are you? Why do you do what you do? Why are you? here on this earth? I am, uh, I think, endlessly curious. And I think curiosity is something that uh, has gotten me in trouble plenty. But at the <laughs> same time, I think it's, it's, you know, even when I was little, my, my parents always thought I was really curious. Now, I'm curious for knowledge. I'm curious for what the other people think. And uh, I'm curious about other points of view. And I think that curiosity uh, has sort of been kind of driving what I do. You know, I'm curious to see what we can do better and next, and and uh, I'm curious to see how great we can be collectively, not only as just a business but as a society. And I think that still drives me today. Yeah, yeah, well, that seems pretty evident. You, over your career, have have I think seen a lot, met a lot of people. Some people that we, maybe we we would recognize on the street somewhere. You probably have some really good. Uh, stories, whether they're they're interviews or or photo shoots, you got you got one you want to share? Yeah, I mean, it was a recent one, and with uh, somebody that shall remain nameless, but uh, <laughs> um, and it's a celebrity, and and uh, and I think that that same the same week we had two interviews with two very different celebrities, yeah. and one of them was terrible, and the other one was great, yeah. and the one that was great was this very hot happening kind of guy who's been uh, you know on TV now for a few years and kind of really really successful and he could have not have been a nicer guy you know when we came to the shoot about 7 in the morning at the hotel uh, we were putting you know, racks of clothes in the staging room and all that and this guy was opening the doors for us yeah. and we thought you know baseball cap and shorts on <laughs> and, uh, and he was opening doors and helping with the rags and yeah. finally you know as I was passing him he said hey Eve, how you doing and I'm like how do you know me? And then we realized I was our star. <laughs> uh, he was just a good guy. Yeah. He was one of those guys that was part of the team that day. Yeah. And he was very gracious, generous with his time, generous with help. And and uh, and he's a big star. You know, and you yeah. didn't expect that from him. And the other guy was completely op the opposite. Yeah. Just really difficult and, and just not forthcoming. And I think that those kind of shows you a little bit that, you know, the attention that these people seem to get. It can either be something that they use for for greatness, or they can use it yeah. to really becoming 
you know, ales. Yeah. And, uh, and so we, we see a lot of that. And, and it never fails to, to make an impression on me. You yeah. can, you know, fame is one of those things that you can either uh, address and, and do it well, or you can really let it spoil you. And, and yeah. we had two very opposite examples, and it was nice to see. I think one of the best um, ju- judges of character, if you will, is how someone treats anyone not just uh-huh. hey i'm going to treat you nice because you are you're someone special but how about the person that just you know brought my food to the table or or you know someone who you know just opened the door for me something like that i think that's so important i think that that's the mark of a good man you know if you're able to to treat the valet the same way you treat the ceo of the company you'll be fine yeah, yeah. You know, people will recognize that too from you so. yeah so what's that uh, Tell us all a day in the life, a day in the life of Eve. Day in the life, uh, up early uh, to try to get a workout in. And we share a workout passion. We share workout passions. Uh, and then also I've referred to the plethora of kids that I have. And so <laughs> we have kids to get to school and, and all of that. So I think that that's the early morning. Um, then, you know, it's up to the office and kind of get the day starting. I, I like my day to start early and, you know, I'm... Uh, even though I'm not a morning person, I tend to be pretty quiet, as you've noticed, yeah, yeah. Um, in the morning. But um, I just want to get my day starting. And then I work until I'm done working, yeah. and which sometimes could be late because I don't look at the watch. I don't look at the I've clock. heard you got in trouble with Diana. I got in trouble a bunch of times <laughs> about uh, you thinking about coming home. I said, what do you mean? It's about 7. She goes, no, it's 11.30. <laughs> so I've done that a couple of times. Yeah. But, yeah, I tend to. That's kind of the day. And yeah. and then, uh, you know, but, but when we're at night at home, uh, you know, Diana and I are, are – television people we love watching tv and yeah so we'll just sit and talk about our day and just yeah. relax with a glass of wine yeah. so i think that that's that's my day yeah and then there's those occasional obligatory uh, evening events right that we both have to go to at times yeah i mean there's a lot of those and i think that i've started to adjust to those too i'm able to kind of you know make an appearance and not yeah. stay there for three hours and uh, i'm not the most um, it's funny it's a weird dichotomy because i'm not the most social of people, but I know it's part of my gig, so I do yeah. it well. Yeah. Uh, but I'm happy to leave when I need to. What's your guilty pleasure? Guilty pleasure. Uh, I don't have a sweet tooth, but I have a um, bag of chips is something I cannot stay away from. <laughs> uh, and then also, uh, I, I like really uh, the Hallmark Channel crappy movies. Uh, that's my guilty pleasure. <laughs> All right. Uh, you and Diana have have regular date nights. Well, yeah, we do once a week. Once a week, uh, we have a, we just yeah. had one Saturday night. Okay. It doesn't have to be a big thing. You know, yeah. We can just get out of the house and yeah. and maybe if, even if it's just a cup of coffee or a glass of wine and then come back. But we made a point to stay connected. Yeah, yeah. I think after all these years, you know, you have to find a way to do that. So important. And we still we still do it, and it's, you know, I dig my wife. Yeah, she's fun. Isn't that great? Yeah, with a three year old at home myself, I find the same the same issue. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's a tough gig. It is a tough gig. So, Eve, uh, if you listen to the show, you know that one of the things that I have the pleasure of doing is asking my guests their final thought question. So if you wouldn't mind sharing with uh, me and with the audience your ultimate lesson learned in, in, over your career as a, as an editor, or, or we'll say maybe in marketing. Uh, tell the truth. You know, I think it's easy to fudge. Uh, I don't want to have a gray area either. Uh, I tell the truth or I don't. It's either you lie or you don't. Yeah. And uh, I've had great lessons in in knowing that telling the truth. You know, my dad used to tell me, if you tell the truth, you won't remember any stories. Yeah. And so I think that to my fault, I will tell the truth no matter what. Yeah. I think that that's, for me, that's the lesson. You know, if I tell the truth, I know that I'll be okay. Yeah. So I think your dad pulled from Ben Franklin. Tell no lies. You don't have to remember a damn thing. That's right. <laughs> All right. Hey, Eve, if anyone wants to get a hold of you, what's the, what's the best way to? I think the best way to, uh, to reach me is via email uh, at, at Eve, Y-V-E-S, at noblemanmagazine.com. And I return my emails promptly. Yeah, you actually do. <laughs> you do. I do. <laughs> well, Eve, it's really been fun having you in, in the uh, studio today. Thank, Thank you, you for much. taking the time. Thanks so much to everyone who has tuned in, and we look forward to having you back in the studio next week. Cheers. Thank you. Tune in next week for the latest edition of the Zandbergen Report, Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Catch up on our recent shows by visiting www.bartzandbergen.com. Interested in being a featured guest on our show or have a question you'd like to hear us answer on the Zandbergen Report? 
Email podcast at bartzandbergen.com. The Zandbergen Report is a production of OC Talk Radio and is provided for educational purposes only. The content of this program and the views of the guests should not be considered as recommendations by OC Talk Radio or investment advice from the host, Bart Sandbergen, or any other entity attached to this production. Investors should always consult qualified financial, investment, tax, or legal professionals prior to investing. <laughs>